Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to be working on this Dell PowerEdge T320 server. This is my own personal server. And we're going to be upgrading the CPU from a 4-core uh, processor to a 10-core Xeon. These uh, take a um, Xeon E5 uh, processor. What's in it now is a 4-core V1 processor, and this is a 10-core v2 processor so let's get started first things first we're going to do some uh we're going to have an anti-static band here so i don't zap anything i'm going to put that on and secure it like that so now i should be protected from static let's open the case up and let's see here put this down gently and then we are going to, can you see that? Hopefully, pull out the shroud, airflow shroud like that. And we have the CPU cooler uh, exposed right there. All right, let me get set up here. On the CPU cooler, we have four screws holding it down onto the CPU. So I'm going to loosen these four screws and then undo them and pull the heat sink off. Hey, there we go. And we have thermal paste on the cooler itself and we have the old CPU right there as you can see. Next step is to remove all of the old thermal paste from the uh, cooler. And to do that, I am going to use these uh, this two-part uh, surface cleaner, thermal material remover, and um, thermal surface purifier. I think this is basically just xylene. Um, that's what you can probably use. Probably works just as, just as well. So I'm going to use a paper towel and try and, whoa kind of crusty. I'm going to put this over a trash can and get the big chunks off. That actually wasn't too good. It kind of flaked off. Dell, I guess, did not use very good, um, did not use very good, uh, thermal paste in these servers. Kind of alright. That surface is Pretty good. Good. Now, I'm going to use the second part to this cleaner, the um, surface prep where that went here. And when I do that, it's important not to get any contaminants on the surface. So I'm going to use these uh, task wipes. So these are like dustless. They don't have a uh, they don't leave lint or, or dust or anything like that on the surface, which could interfere with the bond. So we'll put some cleaner on and really get really get this clean. Good. That looks really nice. That's super shiny. Nice. Can you see that? That's the kind of surface you want to work with, to start with. Alright, now I'm going to do what they call tinting the surface of the uh, cooler. And I'm going to use this uh, Arctic MX4 thermal compound. Um, supposedly this is some sort of carbon nanoparticle compound or something like that. We'll see. It, uh, I'm not sure it makes much difference, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze a little bit of that compound on here, like so, and then I'm going to take an old credit card and I'm going to just work that into the surface. And um, I'm trying to fill in all of the surface imperfections. So I'm trying to get 
the thermal compound into all of the, the crevices, the micro crevices, nooks and crannies that are in the cooler itself, in the metal, you know, from the machining process. So essentially it's just spreading it out and then I'm going to wipe it, uh, wipe it off just so that it's, you, you can see a touch of it. It's just the surface, just filling in the, um, filling in all the voids. Okay, now I'm going to take one of these lintless wipes and just wipe the surface off of as much of it as I can. And you can see, even though I wiped it off, it's still not as shiny as it, it was before. That's because the compound remains and all of the uh, surface imperfections. So it helps to create a good uh, mating surface. So we're going to do the same thing to the CPU. I'm going to do this on an anti-static surface. Could do it on the bench, but um, the bench has an anti-static mat, but for the purposes of filming, I'm going to do it right here. The lighting is nice, and you guys can see, and it's at a nice height for me, so we'll just do it right here. I wish they would have put this thing in an anti-static bag. Uh, that is e E5 2470V2. That is a 10 core processor. So I am going to 10 core processor. I'm going to apply the same Arctic Clean second stage to this to really clean the surface of this um, CPU off. Hopefully there will be, do not need very much, just enough to get the surface covered. Good. Now we're going to turn our attention down here. I'm going to just wipe this off a little bit. Actually, this is kind of flaking. I will pull this CPU out and then clean it off. Remember which way it goes. The, uh, the, this tab here goes on the right side. Well, for you it's the top. And the little uh, arrow points down and to the right. Or for you, it's up and to the right. <sighs> All right, there we go. Let's carefully install the new CPU. Be being careful not to touch. You don't want to touch any of these surfaces that have been tinted. You're oils from your hand can really mess up the uh, the bond or the uh, the thermal coupling uh, that's that's all right okay new CPU is installed okay now we are gonna apply a vertical line to the cap like that. That should be good enough. The idea the idea is is that you want a a good thermal bond. You don't want the the um, compound to be too thick 
because that would be bad. That would the metal to metal contact is actually the best thermal con conductor that you can have. Um, the compound is simply to facilitate that heat transfer. It's 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 there not not there for anything more. So that's why you want uh, this line will when you crank down this this heat sink it'll actually spread out over the entire CPU and um, create a very thin layer. Uh, between the CPU and the heatsink. Okay, I think that's done. Oh, I put the heatsink on upside down from the way it was before, but since it is symmetric, that is not going to be a problem. All right, I'm going to put this shroud back in. Like that. All right. They're all back together. I am going to clean up this CPU off camera, put it in this bag, and store it away. And uh, then we'll power it on and see what we get. Okay, all plugged back in, and let's power it up and see what we get. Ah, it's doing something. That's a good sign. Let's go into the life cycle controller. <clears throat> but it definitely looks like it detected it. You can you saw it up there. All right, finally got the system hardware inventory up. Everything takes forever on these servers to do, but we are up and if we take a look here, I don't know if you can see it, but I'll read it to you. Intel Xeon E5 2470V2, running at 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, number of processor cores, 10. DECA core processor. Number of enabled threads, 20. Number of enabled cores, 10. Primary status is OK. So, I think we are good to go. I'm going to restart this, uh, this server. And that should be it. All right, we are booted and yeah, there we can confirm. I don't know if you can see it, but we have a Xeon E5 2470 10 core. Look at that. That's a thing of beauty. We have 20 threads, 10 physical cores, 20 threads. Excellent. Alright guys, thanks for joining me on this uh, little bit different video, but I hope you enjoyed it. And um, yeah, if you like these videos, be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and uh, check out some of my other videos. If you're into uh, uh, engines and cars and things like that, you might enjoy some of my other videos. I'll see you on the next one.